Hello friends, today we will discuss another important topic for MSCPCH clinical examination, hemolytic anemia in pediatric population. You may expect these cases in your clinical exam or your history station. So please be well prepared before your exam. Today's question of the day. First, you need to understand what is hemolytic anemia. When the RBCs are destroyed faster than they are produced, what are the types? It could be congenital, it could be acquired. We will discuss most three common causes of hemolytic anemia in pediatric population. These are sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, and hereditary spherocytosis. Let's start with sickle cell disease. It is an autosomal recessive disorder of HBS. What it causes? It causes hemolysis as well as a vasoocclusion. It is prevalent in Indian subcontinent as well as Middle East and Mediterranean region as well as in Africa. What are the features of sickle cell disease? First of all, anemia which may be manifested as pallor, peptic, jaundice. Second could be vasoocclusive disease like tactilitis. Second, it could be acute chest syndrome. And the third one, stroke-like syndrome or mm, end organ failure. What are the investigations? First of all, full blood count and peripheral blood smear. It may reveal the low hemoglobin, low RBC as well as the Second thing, we can do hemoglobin electrophoresis. Third one, we can induce sickling test. And the fourth one is genetic test for the confirmation. Let's discuss the management. The first management should be always targeting at the acute crisis. You may consider the IV fluid to prevent the occlusion. We may need to consider the blood transfusion and pain relief medication. The second thing for the chronic cases, we may need to use hydroxyurea and we need to start the prophylaxis penicillin as well as the vaccination because in sickle cell disease there is a risk of hyposplenism. So you need to vaccinate the patient against the capsulated organisms like meningococcal, pneumococcal as well as HIV. And sometimes we may need to consider bone marrow transplant that can be curative in some cases. Next type of hemolytic anemia is thalassemia. It is a disorder of globin chain production. It could be alpha thalassemia, it could be beta thalassemia. In alpha thalassemia, there is a decreased production of alpha globin chain. In beta thalassemia, there is a decreased production of the beta globin chain. It is prevalent in Asian region as well as in Mediterranean. What are the features of thalassemia? First of all, anemia, which is a result of destruction of RBCs. As a result of that, jaundice may produce. And where is the site of destruction? It's spleen. So you may expect the splenomic. Then it may manifest the growth failure because all the bone marrows are overactive and there you can expect some growth deformity as well. And the bony deformities may manifest it as frontal bossing, widening of the wrist, and you may expect severe iron overload because of repeated blood transfer investigations. First of all, you may you have to do the full blood count and peripheral blood smear. There you may find high microscopic hypochromic anemia. A, by doing the liver function test, you may expect altered liver function test because of the jaundice. And the third thing, you may need to do the hemoglobin electrophoresis for the confirmation. Otherwise, you may consider the genetic test for the confirmation. Another important study for thalassemia is iron study. Because most of the time complication arises because of the iron overload. It may overload in brain, it may overload in liver, spleen, thyroid, and some other thing. Yearly tests for a patient with thalassemia are complete blood count, liver function test, serum ferritin level, liver iron concentration by doing T2 MRI imaging, 
and cardiac iron load by doing T2 MRI cardiac imaging. Some other tests you have to do. Endocrine profile, renal function test, viral screening, audiometry, and bone density scan. What is the management of thalassemia? In milder cases, you may prescribe folic acid. In severe cases, may require the blood transfusion and iron chelation therapy. In some cases, uh, we may consider bone marrow transplant and that can be curative in some cases. Let's discuss the third variety of hemolytic anemia, which is hereditary spherocytosis. In hereditary spherocytosis, there is a membrane protein defect. As a result, the RBCs become spherocytes and it will be prematurely destructed in spleen. For that reason, anemia joins this splenomegaly results. And it is much more prevalent in Northern European. What is the clinical feature of hereditary spherocytosis? First of all, anemia because of the RBC destruction. As a result of destruction, bilirubin releases. So it results in jaundice. The third thing, where it is happening in spleen, so that you may expect splenomegaly. Sometimes you may come across aplastic crisis as a result of parvovirus infection. And it also results pigmented stone in gallbladder. What are the investigations for hereditary spherocytosis? First of all, full blood count as well as peripheral blood smear which can reveal the spherocytes. Second thing, we can do osmotic fragility test and the third one, eosin 5 malamide binding test which, which confirms membrane defect. Let's discuss the management of hereditary spherocytosis. First of all, you have to supplement the patient with folic acid. Second, you may need to consider splenectomy in severe cases. In splenectomy patient, you need to consider two things. First, you may need to vaccinate the child against the capsulated organisms like pneumococcus, meningococcus, and HIV. And you have to put this patient on long-term prophylaxis with penicillin. The third thing, you may need to consider cholecystectomy in gallstone cases. The fourth one, you may need to monitor the acute hemolytic crisis in summary. Hereditary spherocytosis is a membrane defect. Sickle cell anemia is a defect of HBS for that reason sickling happening. And the third one is thalassemia which is a defect of globin chain production. And you may need to consider some investigation. First of all full blood count, electrophoresis and genetic test and management, supportive blood transfusion and sometimes bone marrow transplant. I hope you are enjoying my videos. So please like, share and subscribe my channel. Your support matters a lot.